Next up, we are going to be calibrating our extruder motor. So just like we did before with the X, Y, and Z axis, we can now do an iterative approach to the extruder motor. But instead of actually building something, we're just going to be extruding 100 millimeters of filament out of our extruder, measuring it, and then doing a little bit of math so we can get a really accurate steps per millimeter. To extrude out 100 millimeters of our filament, we need to actually disassemble our machine a little bit. We need to unscrew our PTFE tube from our cold end of our extruder and then push out our material. But because our printer actually has a little bit of brains to it, um, if the hot end is completely cold, it'll say, hey, I can't push anything through because I'm just going to get a clog. So we need to preheat the nozzle. So to do that, we're gonna go into prepare, preheat PLA, and preheat PLA end. We don't really need to preheat the bed, doesn't really matter for us. And while we're doing that, we're hoping to reach a value over 180 degrees Celsius. If you try and extrude material below that value, it's just gonna say hot end is too cold. All right, so now that our hot end is nice and toasty, we are gonna be taking our filament out. So we don't need to pull it all the way out. Uh, if you can see, uh, your filament is actually coming through here all the way. Uh, we don't need to yank it all the way out because we are going to be trim cutting this. Give this nice and pretty. Um, but we do need to grab our double-sided wrench. I hope you kept on to this. Uh, and we're going to be unscrewing this Bowden connector with the smaller wrench. So we can just unscrew this and take it out. And we need to make sure that our hot end is still hot. Even though we aren't pushing anything through it, we still need it to use our extruder. So now I'm going to grab our side cutters. And the one thing, one really important thing that you'll notice with these side cutters is that they are a trim side cutter. So if you look at one side of it, it's actually completely flat on one edge. So if you cut something out on that, all of your waste material, your waste stock, is gonna be coming out on that side, and it is going to be completely flush on that. So if you look over here, we do have a little bit of filament hanging out on that side. So we're gonna take our side cutters, and you can see we're gonna try and get them as absolutely flat against that wall as possible, and cut. And now we've got a perfectly clean wall. So if we extrude out 100 millimeters and then make that second cut, we know our part is going to be, well, hopefully exactly 100 millimeters. So to do that, to actually push out our material, we're going to be going move axis by going prepare, move axis, X or extruder, excuse me, uh, 10 millimeter increments, and then slowly dial up the knob to 100 millimeters. Um, there is a memory to it, so if you accidentally go 110 and then back, it will extrude up to 110 millimeters and then back to 100. So slowly dial that up and you'll, ex and you'll see our material starting to come out on the other end. So one thing that I do is I always make a little cross on the extruder wheel there, uh, just to make it really obvious to know when it's turning. Um, for some reason, when the gear is moving so, so slowly, it's actually really hard to see when it's stopped. And the cross has stopped moving, so now we can come back with our side cutters and make a flush cut. So I'm gonna go back in there, put our side cutters right up against that wall as close as we can, and make a cut. So now this is a really, really valuable uh, bit of filament. Um, but we can take this and we can do some measurements on it. So now we're going to be using that little bit of filament we just extruded and a pair of calipers. And this step can be kind of tricky because we need to measure exactly how long this is. But as you can see, uh, it is not a straight line, it's a curve. So uh, we're going to be using the calipers uh, basically with this little screw loosened. So as we straighten out uh, this curved material, we're going to be stretching it to see how far it can possibly go to push our wall as further away. So we know it's going to be about 100 millimeters, but I've seen printers that uh, extrude as, or as little as 90 millimeters or as much as 120. So we're going to be making it pretty, pretty close. 
And then as I straighten out this bit of filament, I'm going to be noticing that the number goes rising and rising and rising. Uh, this step is a ton easier if you have a friend, but unfortunately I just have a cameraman. So as we push it further and further out, you can see the most that it really gets is 98.9. That's as much as I'm getting. So this printer, even though I have not touched the extruder, uh, and I've said extrude 100 millimeters, it's actually under extruding. It's not producing as much filament as I would expect. And I actually know this already because after looking at the calibration cube that we just printed, I noticed on the very, very top surface, there's ever so slight little gaps in there. And so this just confirms uh, what I thought was going on. I am getting under extrusion. If I was to look at that calibration cube and I notice on the walls, it has little kind of ribbles where it's actually being pushed out a little bit too much, then I would kind of think that it would be over extruding. And so this under and over balance is what we can kind of dial in today. So 98.9 is our millimeters that we're going to go for. And so we can now pull up our lovely math formula. So we're going to say, I wanted 100 millimeters. I have divided it by my measured, which is 98.9 millimeters. And I need to multiply it by the steps per millimeter for the extruder. And in this case, that is 93 steps per millimeter. So remember the, uh, the extruder motor requires 93 electronic pulses to move the filament one millimeter. And that's the value that we're trying to recreate. So whatever that is, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, that is what I need to plug into my uh, machine just by going through the exact same steps that we did on the X, Y, and Z. So you're gonna go control, motion, steps per millimeter, extruder, and then change that value. So go ahead and plug that into your machine. Now that we have that new steps per millimeter saved in the machine, we can take this first extruded material and get rid of it. Don't wanna see it. You don't wanna mix it up with the second and third bit of material that you extruded. Uh, I've done that far too many times. Um, so now that my uh, 94 steps per millimeter, that is my first iteration is plugged into my machine. I'm now extruding a second iteration. Now we're gonna do a total of three extrusions on this that will get us closer and closer to our value. Um, what you may happen is that even though we were under extruding on this first one, your second round may be over extruding and that's perfectly okay. What we're looking for is the difference between what we're extruding and what our goal is. And that goal is 100 millimeters. So if we extruded 98 millimeters on our first extrusion, then that would be two millimeters away from our goal. If our second iteration, it's over extruding to 101 millimeters, that's technically getting closer and closer because now we're only one millimeter away from our final goal. So now we are going to cut this same way that we just did before, slice it off, and we can do our second round of measuring. So our first one was 98.9, so hopefully this will be uh, a little bit closer to that 100. And again, if we go over that value, that is completely okay. So again, pushing it out. And if we get to within 0.1 millimeters, I am gonna be as happy as Larry, however happy Larry is. So 99.8, that is pretty, pretty close. So again, we are gonna do the same formula, but with a little difference. So we're still going to go 100 millimeters divided by 99.8, but instead of multiplying it by 93, we're gonna be multiplying it by our new saved uh, steps, per steps per millimeter that we got from the first iteration. So it'll be 100 divided by 99.8 multiplied by 94, and this will give us our second new steps per millimeter count. So I want you guys to do this a third time in the exact same process that we did before. Then you can go back a couple pages, save it uh, into the memory of your machine and your steps per millimeter will be pretty nailed. So essentially what we are making by doing all of these iterations after iterations after iterations is known as a damped harmonic oscillator. This is a type of waveform or a type of function where you have got a curve as it's going up and down, 
but the amplitude, the very highs and the very lows of it are slowly decaying over time. So even though we started with a really high value and then our second iteration went lower, it's still going up and down, but it's slowly steadying out until it forms a completely constant line, which in our case is that 100 millimeters.